It's Blow Your Mind Learning with Lyle Dilly. We're going to take a moment to build a flower in Adobe Flash. Actually create a keyframe animation in this amazing tutorial. Welcome to Blow Your Mind with Lyle Dilly. We're going to uh, take a little moment to create an animation from scratch. Uh, to create an amazing thing that can create some beautiful mosaics for flowers, for trees, uh, and for anything your heart desires, you can create a lot from this kind of keyframing animation style that I'm going to show you. We're going to go through it step by step, the best step to, that we can, and we're going to see uh, what we can create, basically. All right? So let's go ahead and get started. All right? First, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our, uh, our, our artboard, all right? Our artboard basically is going to be uh, uh, ActionScript 3.0. The size is going to be 1280 by 720. Uh, that's standard uh, HD size so that we can put it on any screen that we want. So we can show off our wonderful animations to anybody we want. Okay. Uh, and once we do that, we'll be able to get started. Okay. Uh, first thing I did, though, is I looked at Google and I found this awesome daisy. I love daisies, and I thought this would make a great part of the tutorial. So I went ahead and uh, got that. Uh, placed it on the artboard and put it about center. Uh, try to uh, make the most about this animation. Okay. Once I did that, though, um, we want to go ahead and make it a guide. Now, a guide in Adobe Flash and Adobe... Um, animation is basically where you're setting up a layer so that it doesn't show up in the final animation when you're publishing it. A lot of times, you know, uh, even if you hide a layer, it's going to show up. But if you make it a guide, it won't show up, which is a great tip uh, when you're doing Adobe Flash um, designs. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to right click it and go to properties. All right. And it's going to show me the properties of that layer. When you click on it, it's probably going to say normal, all right? Well, what we'll want to do is we want to create as a guide, okay? One slight small note is I could even make it transparent where you could see through it, see behind it, see in front of it, which is a great thing for each layer to do. But here, we're just going to make it visible. It's not necessary for this particular thing. Then I'm going to lock it because we don't want to touch it after we're done, all right? So I've locked. Shows down here that I've locked it, uh, and we could go ahead and move forward which is cool, right? Once we have locked the flower, we could go ahead and create the animation. What we're going to do is kind of a building block style animation using keyframes. A keyframe is um, a separate animation from one to the other, kind of like a flip book. Every time I do a keyframe, I am creating a new part of it, okay? Uh, uh, basically a new uh, set of that uh, flip book, so to speak, so that I, it can move on through the animation. So what I want to do to begin with is um, I want to go ahead and make this background uh, go across the entire animation. I want this animation to be about 10 seconds, okay? Well, if you look down here, it says that we're about 24 frames per second. That being said, 10 times 24, pretty easy math, 200 frames. So I'm going to go ahead and do my little side scroll down here in the timeline. Go ahead and go to 240 frames. And I'm going to go ahead and insert a keyframe. To insert a keyframe, it is F5. Okay. When I press F5, it's going to insert a keyframe. So if I press F5, boom, it inserts a keyframe. I'm going to undo that for a second. What you'll also notice, though, is I can also do the same thing by right-clicking and insert a frame. Okay. So, F5 is insert a frame, okay? Uh, so, that's what we're going to do. Now, the difference between a frame and a keyframe is a frame extends an animation and a keyframe restarts the animation onto a new, uh, a, 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 to basically a new cell on the artboard, okay? So, I've now extended this animation all the way, this background all the way to 240 frames, which gives us a goalpost. We want a goalpost, right? Once we get to that point, I'm now going to insert my first color. 
which we're going to say green. I'm going to start the back layer first. If you look on here, there is uh, the green stem. Okay. Once we get to the green stem, then we're going to have the white petals, and then we're going to have the orange uh, middle part of that flower. Okay. We're going to start with green. I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, a color. I'm going to go ahead and pick this darker color, this darker green color, which you show up here, as my starting off color for this. I'm going to start by pressing F6, uh, which is going to start my keyframe. Once I have my keyframe here to start, I'll go ahead and zoom in, press the paintbrush, and start painting a little bit. The key to do this is to do it in small bits. The smaller bits you do for every single frame, the more fluid the animation is going to do. If you start doing it too big, it'll get too big. Uh, and it'll be hard to get through this, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to start painting a little bit right at the edge of the artboard here, okay? Once I start painting it, I'm going to go to the next frame and press F6 again. Make another new keyframe. All right, I can also right click and insert a keyframe, but uh, I do want to try and get it to be um, I want to get it to be uh, I need to delete these. So these need to be clear. I can remove frames. Right click, remove frames. So if this happens to you, right click, remove frames. Look, it needs to be empty. This won't work unless it's empty. That's my fault. Uh, it's a great lesson in here to go ahead and remove frames uh, because watch what happens when I remove frames and it's empty. If I press F6 now, it actually copied from the previous frame into the next frame, which is the building block for this particular kind of animation style. So now that I'm in here, I can go ahead and add a little bit to it. I'm just going to add just a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the next one, press F6, build. Next one, press F6, build. Let's do one more. Go to the next one, press F6, build. Okay. It's a little bit of tedious, but the final version of this animation will, will make for an amazing look. Okay. If you notice if I scan through this, it's already starting to look like I'm building upon this uh, area. Now, I'm going to skip this just a little bit. We're going to go start a little bit on this white. Once I get to a point where I want to start building the white, I'm going to insert another layer, which this will be the white layer. Okay. Uh, usually for this white, because this isn't necessarily stark white, I'm going to use slightly off white here. Okay. As my fill color, go back to the brush. It's going to be important, though, when I do this, is to lock the other layers. I don't want to touch the green anymore. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer. Once I lock that layer, now I can start building on this flower. What I like to do when I'm doing this kind of animation is start on the bottom. Once I start on the bottom, I'm going to work my way out. Okay. We'll work my way out. You see that? Once I'm done with this, oh, look, it did the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Remove all these frames because they're, they're not going to work. Once I do that, boom, now I can do the same thing. All right, I can press F6 and build upon these animations. All right, so once I build upon the animations, you can see that it's starting to actually build. All right, one thing though is I started this in the wrong area, but that's okay. You can I'm going to hold shift and select both of these 
and you can click and drag these cells anywhere. So I can build and put these particular animations anywhere on the page. So it can build the bottoms of the, it can build the bottoms, zoom out here. It can build the bottoms and then build the tops. But if you notice, it didn't extend the animation down here, but that's okay. That's what F5 is for. I'm going to extend this last frame into this bottom frame by pressing F5. So we're starting to build upon these animations, okay? Once I build upon these animations, I can eventually create the entire piece, all right? Which, if you look at my next tutorial, I did. All right, I went ahead and built the whole thing. If you notice here, all these layers are locked. I also added a background. One thing about this, though, is I can make the background disappear anytime I want. Okay? I can make each layer disappear. If you notice, I have my green layer now. I have the white layer, and I have the yellow layer. One thing you'll notice about this yellow layer, okay, let me zoom in, is I have all these shapes. And that's another technique that you can use in order to build this animation, is instead of using things, I'm actually using um, not, more than even shapes. I'm using uh, these... Uh, let me unlock it so I can explain it. Uh, I'm using all of these instances of a symbol. So these are all this symbol okay so uh i did that so that i could have this amazing gradient on the circle and that gradient can be all around here so i used it i literally just dragged it copied and pasted it and i even used q to resize them however i needed it to be on the page and i created this wonderful mosaic all around my great daisy Okay, now, one thing that you'll notice is that I built it, but I didn't build anything else. Well, that's because I'm going to go ahead and not just build this, but I'm going to do it backwards, okay? Because I know at the end of the animation, I can build it backwards to forwards. You could do it either way. I'm choosing it to do it backwards. You can do it backwards and forwards, depending on how you want to build this animation. I'm going to go ahead and do it backwards, okay, where I'm literally going to make it disappear frame by frame, all right? So let me show you how that looks when it's done, okay? So I have this built frame by frame, okay, going backwards. Look, so as soon as it gets to the animation, you can see that it's disappearing in the center, okay? That it is, uh, that even that center part is disappearing, right? And I even have the white disappearing. Now I'm doing this, instead of doing it, I'm painting it backwards. But I'm doing it per layer. Yellow, white, green, and my background. All of it's locked. All of it should be locked. Okay? Okay which creates this amazing animation that's, that's doing this, okay? Now, uh, a lot of you are going to say, well, Lyle, I did this animation, but it's one per. Well, let me tell you, all right? I can insert into any one of these frames an extra, an extra frame, okay, by pressing F5. So if I press F5 into this, I'm extending it to another frame right so let me press f5 and you notice that i inserted a new frame all right which is awesome but now that i did that i could go ahead and uh, i'm going to undo that but a lot of times you're going to want to insert a frame and push everything forward okay so if i do that i'm going to select all of the frames i want to move forward and press f5 and it will insert and literally push the entire animation one frame to the right, which you're going to find very useful when you're creating these kind of animations. You can also do it by right clicking and clicking remove the frames. Remove the frames will remove all the frames 
to the left. If you want to delete a frame but not actually move anything, you're going to have to say clear a frame right here. That will actually empty the frame without moving the frames. So you yeah, got many different types that you can actually use to build this animation. Okay. So uh, as you can see, I made this great animation right here, building it, taking it away, making this great stuff. But remember, this tutorial is building it. And you said, Lyle, you're making it all go away, which is awesome, but that's not what you've set out to be. Aha, but Flash is deceptively amazing because it has a great feature where I can select all these frames. Go ahead and select them all. Start down here. Select all these frames. Once I've selected them all, I'm going to right click it and look down here. Look down here, folks. You can't even see it. That's okay. There's a thing called reverse frames. All right. You'll see it. All right. Um, there's a thing called reverse frames, and we're going to use it. Okay. Can't even see it on the screen, but that's okay. We're going to reverse the frames, and it's going to move all the frames from the left to the right. Okay. Uh, reverse frames right under modify go to timeline reverse frames it's going to switch everything the other way around so now it's building instead of taking away okay it's a little off I may have to do it but I did manage to fix this once I did this so let me show you what it looks like when it's done this is a finished animation, building it. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit so we can see it a little better. Look at that, folks. It's a finished building animation. All right? Let's watch this in action. Pretty amazing, right, folks? All right. Uh, there's a lot to this. It's going to take a lot of practice. Go back and forth. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to go ahead and put it in the comments below in this tutorial. I'll go ahead and answer any questions that I can if I need to add or maybe make another uh, tutorial expanding on some of these that you're learning from this. Let me know. I'll do the best that I can to go ahead and expand upon it. Um, Again, this is uh, Lyle Dilly with Blow Your Mind with Lyle Dilly. And um, uh, I appreciate you watching. All right? Thanks.